Live from the MGM Grand Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Q at Splunk.com 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Splunk. Here are your hosts, Jeff Kelly and Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back. I'm Jeff Frick. We're here at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas at Splunk.conf 2014, the fifth uh, annual Splunk uh, uh, user convention. Over 4,000 Splunkers, aficionados, customers, partners here, learning about Splunk, use cases, best practices, a lot of energy, the room is full. If I could turn the camera around, you'd see uh, people all over the place. I'm joined here in this next segment with my co-host, uh, so we're joined by Todd Papiano, who is the CTO of Splunk, uh, also a CUBE alum. Todd, welcome back to the CUBE. Thank you, good to be back. So you've been with Splunk now almost a year. What's, what, mm -hmm. what's the year been like? You're basically riding a rocket ship here, aren't you? It, absolutely, rocket ship is a great way to describe it. It's, it's come out for a year. Um, so I've been learning, you know, I kind of spent the first kind of like three months, I think just, you know, learning the people, you know, learning the products and the architecture, you know, starting to think about the customers, then spend the next kind of like three, four months on the road. Mm -hmm talking to our customers, learning all the fantastic stuff people are doing about, um, doing with Splunk, right, in their business. Um, and then it's like, you know, it felt like I was finally up to speed and kind of like, was, you know, dangerous enough to talk about the company, talk about what we're doing, <laughs> understand the market, where we fit, and all the rest of it. Yeah, so what do you take on the show here? I mean, obviously a lot of great customers, a lot of good uh, energy. Yeah, the show has been fantastic. Bigger than last year, a ton of customers. Best thing about this show, I think, is just the amount of customers and use cases and folks I get to talk to. It's never a dull day when you know I get up and know that I'm going to talk to you know half a dozen you know high-profile customers who are doing a real variety of different things with Splunk. Yeah, I definitely want to talk about some of those novel use cases that you're seeing, but I think what would be beneficial to our audience is to help us get, if you can give us a Splunk 101 from a technology perspective, mm -hmm. um, because you know Splunk gets kind of mentioned with uh, the big data term. Um, and I, I'm not sure everybody quite understands where Splunk kind of fits. So maybe if you could walk us through the technology stack from a Splunk perspective. Yeah, absolutely. And then maybe we can put it in context of the larger big data world. Absolutely, so I, I think of Splunk as um, doing kind of like three or four very, very simple things. And the first is we collect data. So we have a set of you know, agents, we call them forwarders, that goes and collects data. So we collect data from the moment it is created. At the server, a log file, an application on the wire, on the network, wherever it is, we collect that data. And we allow customers to just forward that and pour it into our platform. Right? So our platform is a scale out, distributed you know, data fabric. I think of us as the next generation data fabric for unstructured data. People collect it, pour it in. They don't have to do anything to it. There's no ETL, no processing, no MDM, no, none, none of that. We just let the raw data get poured in. And then we are, allow you to extract value. And we do that using our search language. You can think of it a little bit like Google. Right? You know, everybody uses Google every day to go and you know, extract value out of unstructured data mostly. Um, so our search language is the interface to the underlying data. And on top of that, we build applications on top of our analytics platform. Um, so there's, you know, there's a bunch of high value ones that we build, like enterprise security and VMware and Exchange and stuff like that. There's a bunch that customers build. But at its heart, it's very simple. Collect data, do nothing to it, forward it into our platform, extract value using our search language, and then use applications on top of it to you know, use that to drive business decisions. So, the application space in the big data world is, is an area that we've been you know, covering for a while here on theCUBE and at Wikibon, and it's been, seems like every year people say, this is the year of the big data application, <laughs> and it just simply hasn't happened for, for, for the most part. But I say Splunk is one of those exceptions. Um, talk a little bit about the application layer and, and your approach to that, both you, because you mentioned, and we've had uh, guests on yesterday, um, both Splunk creates applications for specific mm -hmm. use cases, but you also open up the platform to customers and developers to build their own applications. We do. Um, how are you able to kind of balance both of those things and, and what's your approach to applications? When does Splunk decide, well, this is an application we need to build and this, this is an area we need to focus on versus let's let the community, mm -hmm. the Splunk community, you know, have at it and build their own applications? Yeah, so a couple of things. I mean, I think you're absolutely right. The application of the big data space has been something that I was, I think I was actually on the Cube in like 2012 talking about, right? And it's just been <laughs> so slow developing, right? You know, and I, I think personally when I look at the market and say, look, if there are no applications in the big data space, then it goes away and just becomes like a file system for Teradata or someone like that, right? So we, we need applications, we need those killer apps. Over the last couple of years, I think we're starting to see a couple of patterns emerging. Security being one, I think security is a, is a killer pattern for 
taking this mass of data, unstructured data, and be able to you know, drive value out of it, uh, and also personalization and targeting, that's another space that I see classes. Uh, at Splunk, you know, we, we deliver a platform, right? You know, a core product, enterprise is a platform, you can build on top of it, so we have a set of SDKs, a set of you know, partner support stuff, you know, developer support, so you can actually go and build apps. And so we build a couple, and, and our approach really is, let the customer kind of like lead us into the applications that they're building and they're trying to solve on top of our platform. And so we take that and we learn from that. Um, and that's kind of like led us to enterprise security, one of our apps, right? Mm -hmm. It's led us to some of the other apps that we have around, you know, monitoring VMware clouds and, you know, monitoring Amazon and that kind of stuff. But there's such a diverse set of things that you can do with Splunk and the data when you pour it into Splunk that there is a thriving, you know, ecosystem of other people building applications on top of our platform, and we welcome that. You know, we have a, you know, a program internally that you know is specifically focused on outreach to developers, outreach to partners, the channel, and you know, establishing an ecosystem of applications. I think for us as a business, you know, we have big aspirations in the data space. Right, for us as a business to become a piece of the cement, a piece of the fabric of like you know the enterprise architecture. We need applications, right? And so we focus on that myopically and you know, enabling people to build apps. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as you mentioned, you've got big ambitions to be a key part of that, that modern data architecture. So help put this in context. So you mentioned kind of the, kind of the storage aspect of Splunk, kind of the scale out distributed. It sounds a lot like what something like Hadoop does and then you've got great Hadoop experience. You've got you know, the tech chops in that space. <laughs> so put Splunk in perspective. How does it relate to something like Hadoop, like the world of NoSQL, where, where does it fit in this kind of emerging modern approach to data management and analytics? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, the way I think about it is this. You know, data gets created at some point, right? And you want to collect it. So we're, we're the front door for that, we collect the data. And then we allow customers to pour it into our platform. So our core platform is uh, enterprise, it's, it's an index. We do some stuff, magic to the data, to allow you to extract value out of it very quickly. Um, and that's really, really good for doing real-time decisioning, real-time alerting, real-time analytics on it. And we see customers using it for a whole wide array of things to do, but it allows you to act on the data immediately. And we see customers, they store, they store a ton of data in there, but you know, I would say traditionally it's a, it's a shorter window than say where you, the amount of data you put in Hadoop. Let's say for us we're looking at people you know, making decisions on you know, 30 to 90 days worth of data. Right? You know, in Hadoop it might be like four years. It's unlikely you're going to keep four years worth of data in Splunk Core, but that's okay because we've got you covered. We, I look at Hadoop as a you know is where the data lake is going to be, where all the data is going to end up. You know, over the next kind of like 10 to 15 years, HDFS is a fantastic file system, mm -hmm. scales out for everybody. So I see the data kind of like a life cycle of it, right? It's like we collect it, we run it through our index, you do real-time decisioning, and then it kind of like lands in HDFS, and then you start to do more long-term trending analysis, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff on it. And so we have a product called Hunk, which is really all of the goodness of Splunk, all of the analytic capability of Splunk, but it just layers over the top of HDFS and allows you to extract value out of any data in HDFS uh, immediately the first day you turn it on. So kind of leveraging that uh, capability, but, but bringing, kind of leaving the storage behind, but bringing the application and the, and the analytics component and layering that on top of HDFS? Yeah, the way to think about it, the way I think about it is kind of like a unified analytics layer, mm -hmm. right? So, that Splunk is a vertically integrated application, quite different, I think, to you know, some of the other kind of like data vendors out there. We collect the data, we store it for you, we process it, you know, we allow you to extract value through our analytics you know, capability and also our visualizations and you know, data enrichment and all of that. But there is a ton of stuff that we do in the analytics layer from the raw data, a field extraction, data enrichment, you know, modeling, pivoting, you know, visualizations, you know, the, whole, the whole shebang to the point where like, users are able to you know, see stuff right, on screen. Mm -hmm. right? Well, all of that goodness above the storage fabric, you can just put straight on top of mm -hmm. Hadoop, right? on, on top of HDFS, and use the same, the same analytics capability on stuff that's in our store and stuff that's on HDFS. You can actually hybrid across the two of them. Very cool. I, I know Jeff wants to get in with a question. I just have one, one more, actually, I wanted to just ask on this thread. Um, so, I'm curious, so does, this, does, does Splunk consider themselves a competitor to some of the SQL and Hadoop engines that are, that are being developed? Um, are you trying to play that role as well? Um, how do well, you I definitely would there? say no to the SQL on Hadoop because we, we, we're not a SQL platform. Right, right? but the, is, is not the, the goal to, to provide more self-service type analytics and easier analytics to get value out of that data in Hadoop? Is that not a similar goal? And, and help yeah. me understand the, yeah, absolutely. the differentiation. I, I, I mean, I, I think 
you know, so Hunk's a you know, new product for us. We released it in the last year. Um, you know, it brings all of the capability of our search language and analytics and all the stuff you can do in, in Splunk to Hadoop. And it's really targeted at you know, existing customers who want to you know, roll data onto Hadoop for long-term storage, you know, cheap batch storage. It's also targeted at you know, Hadoop customers who, you know, and like you said, like I've been around the Hadoop ecosystem for quite a while, right? I think the state of the art in Hadoop is and charitably saying, it takes a little while to start to get value out of Hadoop, right? There's a lot of science projects that happen, you know, six, nine months kind of like build outs. There's a lot of people who are a little bit dissatisfied, right? And so with Hunk, you can take it and point it at data that's in HDFS and use all of our analytic capability, visualization, charting, all the rest of it to extract value. So is it a competitor to kind of like Impala and Stinger and those kind of things? I mean, in the sense that we help people extract value from the data in HDFS and Hadoop, sure, you could say that. Um, I think we do it differently. We're much more of a vertically integrated stack focused more on you know, the IT, the business analyst, rather than the programmer, per se, right? Yeah, and I want to follow up with Todd, because one of the topics that always comes up is the consumerization of IT. And really, when we talk about that, as you said, everybody's used Google. It's really the expected behavior of applications mm -hmm. and access to data that I'm used to when, I, when I'm on Google, right? That's kind of my benchmark now. And it seems like Splunk's taken a very different kind of Google-esque philosophy, if you will, in that it's really based on search. It's not based on uh, data scientists who are very, very sophisticated at, at, at complex queries, et cetera, but really more an iterative process of delivering that search capability down to people that are not data scientists so they can make actionable yeah, decisions. exactly. I think that's a very, very astute way of thinking about it. I think. The company was originally started, right, you know, back in the day by the founders. They, they started the company to basically bring you know, Google to IT data. Right? And so I've, I've been on record saying I believe that search will be the de facto query language for big data going forward. Yeah, I'm a bit of a you know, Star Trek fan, I think most techies are. Right? And when I think about like, how do people interact with, you know, how do they interact with data on Star Trek, right? Well, they talk to the computer, and like, computer, show me all the planets that were in blah, 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 right? Well, that's search, right? It's not like select planets from, you know, planet tables, you know, cross with like local universe, right? So they don't do that, right? right. I, I think I, the vision that I have for where we're going with interacting with data will be driven by search. Data exploration and data discovery will be a search thing. And you're going to want to use the kind of, you know, capabilities we have in our product right now, right? The search language and even more so, more towards NLP. I want to be able to, you know, log into a product and say, Show me all of the customers within 20 mile radius of this store who churned in the last six months. And that's the kind of interface that I want for you know, discovery, you know, data discovery, data exploration. And that's the business analyst thing. Now, there's one more access pattern to the data, I think, which is important, which is algorithms, right? Which is, you're seeing a lot in big data, people starting to do stuff at Spark and some of the other kind of like things on top of Hadoop, which is really driving machine learning algorithms you still need that capability in the platform. That won't be search driven, that'll be algorithm driven. And right. I think the data scientists will you know, use search to understand stuff, create an algorithm, the algorithm will start to run, right? and then you start to feed that back into the decisioning system. And so ultimately you want to build what I think of as data driven applications, data driven decisioning, right? Yeah, and I thought what was interesting in Godfrey's keynote is he talked about not only adding what we think of traditional kind of big data, data sources, you know, with, with mobile and, and now unstructured in social, but even, you know, machine to machine, hardcore, inside the, uh, inside the machine data, as mm -hmm. well as now connecting to mainframe. So, really expanding the breadth of data sources and data types that feed into this machine. Yeah, absolutely. I think when, you know, when I think about the opportunity for us at Splunk, anywhere there's data, machine data, that's where we go, right? I mean, so when I talk to customers, they say, well, look, I think you probably think traditionally we're good at kind of you know, ingesting your server logs. <clears throat> well, think about the server logs and the application logs. Also, the logs of all of the devices in your data center. By the way, we'll also get the data from the power in the data center and the building and cars and trains and planes and automobiles and all of that stuff, right? right? We go and get that and we pull it all into our platform. We can take data pretty much from anywhere and allow you to do, you know, to build really interesting insight out of it. And I think, you know, one of the best, one of the best things about this job is I'm never bored of meeting new customers doing novel things. You know, I was, I was telling some folks actually last night, I was speaking at a conference, you know, a couple of months ago for one of our customers, and um, they build fuel pumps and gas stations and stuff like that. So, you know, you guys do a lot of these shows, right? You probably go to the partner show, you know, for us, right? You see a bunch of booths with kind of like, you know, monitors and people showing you software. So I did the keynote of this thing, I came out, I went to walk the floor, and like in the middle of the floor is a fuel pump, fully functioning fuel pump, and I'm like, wow, this is the coolest thing, right? It's like, 
this is real actual like stuff, tangible stuff that like affects me day to day. And by the way, we're pulling all the data off that stuff and allowing them to do analytics on it in real time, right, from a fuel pump. I'm right. like, okay, that's just one customer. Right. You know, next day I'm talking to someone who's like monitoring like elevators and you know escalators. Right. Right? Right. Then the next day it's like people doing like buildings and then it's kind of like software and applications and you know, security intrusions, and like every day is like a fantastic, fantastic experience of like what people are doing with our software. So we're getting, we're getting the short time, but there's another huge uh, force in the marketplace that I wanted to touch base with you, and that's Amazon. Mm -hmm. right? Amazon on a whole bunch of fronts. Amazon, in, again, defining in the way we interact with applications and our expected behavior, but then also obviously AWS and their drive to cloud, their drive to pricing. And, and I see AWS is, is a, a sponsor here, obviously a big partner. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about you know, kind of the relationship between Splunk and AWS. Where is it today? Where is it heading? Yeah, they're a fantastic partner, fantastic business partner, and also a show partner. And we had a big announcement this week. You know, we've actually announced that they're going to be OEMing Hunk, take, rolling out. So you know, they're, I mean, clearly Amazon is setting the trend. They haven't been setting the trend for years in where cloud computing is going. There's a ton of data in S3, ton of data that people process in EMR. They're OEMing Hunk and allowing people to use Hunk on top of data in EMR and S3, which I think is huge because that data set is just going to continue to grow exponentially, right? I think it's a very, very tight relationship. You know, we have a ton of fun working with them and a ton of, you know, a ton of really good, um, you know, high level synergy and where's the future of, you know, this applications that people are going to want to build on top of their platform and where we can help drive value. Yeah, I was, gonna, I was just going to say, it's just it's great how you guys are, you're, you're at Amazon, you, you've got Hadoop, you know, you've got your own SaaS platform. You guys seem to be kind of really covering the bases for your customers and really offering a, a, a plethora of options for them to be able to implement this. Absolutely, ultimately what we want to do is offer people a single unified analytics capability and say, look, you have data on-prem, we got you covered. We got data on Amazon, we got you covered. Your private cloud, we got you covered, right? You know, by the way, we run your cloud too. All through the same unified analytics fabric, right? You can point it at any of where the data is, and we'll slope it all together and you know drive insight and value out of it. Right. That's kind of like you know the big vision for us is data anywhere. We'll make it accessible and usable. All right, Todd. Well, thank you very much for getting the hard hook. Uh, give Matt grief for not scheduling a longer segment with you. So <laughs> next time, uh, Matt, we need longer segments this time. Uh, so Jeff Rick here, day two at Splunk.com. If you're watching the Cube, we'll be back in our next segment after this short break.